Kerry Farrell. Deutschland. <lacht> äh, ich, ich liebe Fedcon. <lacht> And Fedcon loves you. Oh, thank you. Really? Oh my gosh, you guys are so lovely. I would never tell you to fuck off. <lacht> 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 fuck off. No, I'm just kidding. Fair enough. No, I really wouldn't. <lacht> so, second day of Fedcon. How was your first day at Fedcon yesterday? Oh, we. Well, Yesterday didn't seem like a whole lot, did it? No? But today was like, wow. Yeah. Right, for everybody? Like yesterday felt like a normal Saturday. Yeah. yeah right. Exactly, yeah. Not a Friday. Today was like an explosion of like, we are released from the COVID nightmare. Everybody's here. <laughs> right? It's like, wow, it feels like we're back in the real world again. So it feels good. It feels good. So I would say we start right away with our fan questions. There you go. Hello. Thank you very much for being here. Um, yesterday, Marina Sir just told us a little bit about her experiences kissing Michael Dorn and the kind of noises he made. So I would, be will, one, I would like you to ask you if you would be willing to share your experiences so that we have a second data point. <laughs> Now I kind of want my purse back so I can get Michael on the phone. Um, um, well, he didn't make weird noises with me. <laughs> Although I do remember at one point, which was sort of early on, uh, I said, and I waited. I was so smart. I waited until, and I knew he liked me a little, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> right before they're saying action, I said, is it okay if I bite you? <laughs> I mean, not real hard, just a little. And he went, <laughs> 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 and it was so weird because there he has all that makeup on and, and because he, we're going to kiss he doesn't have those uh, teeth in so it's like it's super incongruent like there's this wild Klingon look and then these perfect teeth like <laughs> you're not really a Klingon so is that where the Klingon Megan bite comes from? where the what? the Klingon, the Klingon mating bite a mating bite oh. I like to initiate the mate you But the, the, well, the male bites the female, but never mind. Oh, I, you know what? I just played the part. I don't know the rules. Fair enough. I hope I broke them. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. It was definitely my pleasure to kiss Michael Dorn. Yeah. Yeah, right? And he's still an incredibly handsome man. Yep. <laughs> I just texted because there's a picture of us from 2010 and I was like oh my gosh I'm wearing like <laughs> weird. I was an at-home mom I, I think Max was like six or seven so I have on Levi's and a shirt and I was thinking I usually dress up too much but seeing the pictures back and even coming out on stage at that time I thought Oh, geez, what the heck am I thinking? I've been at, at home mom too long. There I am at home mom in my Levi's that are too big for me. And uh, yeah, 
It's sort of sad. Anyway. <laughs> Hi, thank you for being here. You're still looking beautiful. Thank you. And thank you. Oh, thank you. Did you want to take your break now? Did you want to take your break now? No, that's okay. Okay, you're good. You want me to go? No, I really don't. Okay, then I stay. But if you want to take a break. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, yo, whenever you want to go. If I want, yeah. I thought he was going to talk to me longer. What's your name again? Nessie, like the monster. Uh, Nessie? Get the hell out. Hi, Nessie. See you later. See you. No, don't leave me. Okay. What? Whatever you want. Maybe. Would you bring me back? I wait here, halfway. Would you bring, would you bring uh, me back a cold white wine? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, no, whatever you want. Seriously. Honestly, it's just too much fun. I'm so sorry. What, what did you want to say? It's not our show. It's their show. I come back in five minutes. Come back. Nessie. Nessie. Yes, I'm so sorry. It's okay. Not really. So I, had, I hope um, I can ask a private question. Um, you hope it's not private? I hope not too private. <laughs> so, you married a very famous name. I did. And, um, I and don't so know did he. You know, <laughs> so, yeah. So. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. Go ahead, and yes. Now you have to live with the footprints of Leonard Nimoy, too. And after the documentation for the love of Spock, I think it's like a bomb all over the world. So does it affect yeah. you? And how yes. is it for Adam now, after the documentation? Uh, documentation, do you mean the marriage? Um, no, for the love of Spock. Uh, so Adam, Adam became more famous, and everybody knows the face um, after Big Bang Theory. Yes. So he's in the spotlight, too. Yeah. And you have to live with all these footprints, too. Yeah. And how, how is it for you? And how is it for Adam after the revelation? You, revelation? <laughs> you would have to ask Adam mm -hmm. how Adam feels. I would rather not talk about my marriage to him with you. I made the comment when I came out because a lot of people don't know. So I will get people coming up for an autograph and it's very difficult to have people come up to me and talk to me about things that are highly personal that I don't even talk to all of my friends about. So um, you know, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. We I both so. wanted it to work very much, and it's really unfortunate. Uh, and um, footprints, to be honest, I feel like I had Leonard's footprints before I knew of anything other than being six years old, sitting in front of the original series, being crazy about McCoy, crazy about Spock, crazy about Captain, what's his name? And uh, yeah, they were like my childhood of play. That's why Trials and Tribulations was such a big deal for me. Um, and, he, and Leonard coming on uh, Becker was a great big deal for me. I got to work with someone who was one of my heroes that had nothing to do with the other relationship. And um, so I will always have those footprints on my heart, in my life. It doesn't go away. I think that just like almost anything in life, it transforms 
So even in relationships, when you meet someone, it's very, there's a lot of hormones happening that, you know, you keep your rose-colored glasses on maybe a little too long. And both of us wanted it to work very much. And I think it's easy to be in a little bit of denial. And um, so painful. Things are painful, but then we grow and they transform into lessons and opportunities for really lifetime lessons that needed to happen a long time ago, which would have stopped the pain from happening. And now here they are, and I just honestly, right now, I'm just trying to be present in my life and work one day at a time, being as open and honest, but still protecting what's sacred and special to me for myself. Mm. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. So I have another question, or can it be lighter? Um, <laughs> I have another question, I'm sorry. Uh, a shocking was the early death of Aaron Eisenberg. Oh. Yes. And uh, um, he was so young. And I hope you can tell us a funny story about him and how he was. Uh, <laughs> uh, Aaron, um, Aaron and I hit heads early on. Aaron was trying to be funny and it came off passive aggressive most of the time with me. So most of the time I felt like I had a quizzical kind of like, go away, <laughs> just shoot, right? I have more things to worry about than what the hell is this kid doing? I don't understand him. And then one day, Uh, I don't remember exactly the words, but he like apologized and said he was just trying to make friends with me. And I was like, oh, well, okay, then let's be friends. You don't have to do this weird, I don't know what you're doing. You're, it's like, like I was the girl, the older girl in the playground and he's the little kid who's coming up and pulling my braids. Like, seriously? You're like, I could babysit you. What do you, <laughs> so at any rate, and then from there, and that was the first season, I'm sure, then we became friends. And so whenever he started to get kind of wonky, I'd be like, Aaron, what the fuck's really going on? <laughs> so then we talk. And so we just always had this kind of nice thing. Like I was a big sister vibe and, um, And then we were more like colleagues. And uh, so I felt like we really earned our friendship by being honest and uh, taking our vulnerabilities to the next level. And I think that is, was one of Aaron's most beautiful qualities, that he was willing to be in the uncomfortable moment and say he was sorry or what I really meant to say was, or somehow clarify wherever he was at. And um, I think partly what was tragic was knowing his condition and being really supportive of his kidney transplant. So his heart attack was like the last thing any of us expected. It was like this poor guy had worked so hard to be a good person, so hard to be in good health. And then, are you kidding me? He has a heart attack? It was like the last person you expected to hear this about. So, very sad. And Melissa is one of the most amazing people, and their relationship was golden. It was like they were made for each other. I have goosebumps <coughs> even saying that. It's like you just, wow, she is an angel and they bought up, brought out the best in each other, although I never saw her not being an amazing person. <laughs> But I saw how she softened him, you know? So, uh, yeah. 
So if you can support her in any way, please do it because she, I can't even imagine, yeah. I can imagine the hoping and wishing, but I, it wasn't the same. They, they, are, they were really soulmates, really. Gorgeous couple. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, Terry. Um, I was going to ask a completely different question, but I think I'll try and lighten it a bit for you. Oh, thank you. I, um, does everybody want lighter, or would you like more <laughs> deep? <laughs> with <laughs> the recent change within the media um, towards more LGBT um, reflections and representation, how does it feel to be pretty much a pioneer in that regard with Deep Space Nine? Oh, I am... And the kiss. Having the... Oh, well, the kiss, whatever. The, the kiss... At that the time, w- that was huge. And the what? At the time, the, ki- the same-sex kiss you had on screen oh, was huge. Oh, yes, and should it have been? No. No. No, because that was about love. It was a love story. Um, for me, uh, when I auditioned, I was told this was going to be the dark Star Trek. This was going to be the Star Wars of Star Trek. So I, my love of the f- original, I thought, oh, we're going to be like on the cover of Newsweek. We're going to shock people with groovy stories that people go like, oh, they did not tell that story. Mm-hmm. They did on television, out loud, and made us look at ourselves and what we're not doing right. And that episode of Rejoined was Steve Oster handed me the script and said, we're going to give you the option. If you're not okay with this, we will not go ahead with this. I read it that night. I could tell by the way he was handing it to me that it was super important. And so it was really hard for me to calm down and read every word, yeah. Uh, and I, my recollection is I called him that night and said, I love it, this is great, I, can I be a part of casting? How involved can I be? Because for me, I started modeling in, in uh, summer of 1981 in New York, and that was the era of AIDS beginning. I lost a lot of gorgeous human beings that made me feel safe, uh, like a little sister, uh, just totally loved for, from that disease. And so it felt like I was able to represent uh, a little slice of right love is love. It's just love. That's all it is. Does it matter what your package looks like? You know? Yeah, yeah, as right? A mem- as a member of the community, thank you. Mm. It was my pleasure, my honor to represent, honestly. And also, um, to lose my train of thought, that, that even ahead of her time, that they made a point of her uh, and Jadzia, not Dax. This is the integration of Jadzia and who Jadzia was in her life that she was, we didn't have this word then, I, did, I wasn't aware of this word, pansexual. And I thought, but I remember thinking, well, here's the thing, she's just way evolved, right? Because she's 300, with the worm, 350 years old. This is how Jadzia is interpreting being a man and a woman and all of this. And this integration means that she really does have no judgment. It's more like you're a being, I'm a being, I see something in you, I see it too. What do you want to do? Let's go play, right? It was like, I, Terry Farrell, can't do that, but I love that she can. I'm just a mere human being with my own shizzle going on. But I love that I've got to represent that. And no, I had no idea at, that this would happen in the world. Did any of us? Would, it, it's just, it's so... Yeah, it's, it's pretty deep. It's uh, an honor, and um, yeah, I'm just amazed, amazed that I'm standing here, and it was something I did such a very long time ago. I'm so pleased. I couldn't be more proud. 
and I'm grateful for the writers, right? To create and write these characters and especially mine. Especially mine, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So it was still deep, but it was, it was like uh, inspiring. <laughs> Oh, hello, no. not up you. here. Oh, <laughs> hello. Hi. 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 Um, I was wondering about how you think Jadzia was before she was joined, what kind of person she was, because I think the joining with Dax was radical change for her. Yeah, I think so too. I think what was great in the, in the beginning was because they didn't know how to describe what they wanted from me exactly and because I didn't have enough really experience as an actress to feel confident to just bring it. I mean, I was a 28-year-old woman, and uh, that was my experience, um, that we started slowly. And so I would have guessed, uh, as the writers were figuring out what they wanted Dax to look like, in that I wasn't completely delivering the stoicism that was asked of me, because I thought, well, if I'm 350 years old, now wouldn't that part of the wisdom feel joy and find beings, human, humanoid, amusing? Why else would you want to keep coming back if you didn't enjoy watching the dynamics of how everyone, like, wow, it's like as an adult now, it'd be so much cooler to play her now because... Now, of course, I've had a son and all of this, and you can reflect back on, I can reflect back on being 28 and going, wow, I really had no fucking idea. <laughs> There's so many things you work so hard at that if you just let go of are all gonna happen anyway, and you're just gonna feel so much better about yourself. But I think she was probably a little shy and very booky, very rules keeping to the task, and then probably mostly Curzon with the Klingons, obviously, yeah. really like, whoa, this is like a whole new feeling for her, and I think it liberated her, and that's probably why she went in that whole other direction of like, I want it all, I want to feel it all, I want to see it all, I don't want to miss anything, but I think you're right, yeah, I think it shook her world in a good way for all of us, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, yes. Mr. Terry. Um, a general question. Um, do the actors of Star Trek get paid for all the merchandise and action figures and or how is it Apparently, it costs too much money in their legal fees and distribution and all of that because I haven't gotten paid. But I think I did have the, uh, how many dolls are? They made dolls of me after they killed me. <laughs> Probably because they don't sell, right? That's why. They don't make any money from it. But no, we, we don't. I mean, I have not heard one actor that has. Okay. And it's, we tried to investigate it, but... It's just uh, a complicated, okay. very expensive process. It just would be, be fair, I think. Um, yes. Yeah, <laughs> Do we you think uh, so too. But, you know, <laughs> we have this gift that keeps giving, and here I am talking to you right now. So I'll stay with what's positive, because, as you know, I've had quite a lot happen with me, like my death. And... <laughs> And, uh, you know, I have you. I have the world turning towards LBGTQ plus community. And uh, I get to be the poster child of a lot of different segments of that community, which I am so happy to stand up for. Okay. Right? So that's a huge gift. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, not that I wouldn't mind the money. Who wouldn't mind the money? But, you know, we got to take what we can get. Hi. 
Hi. My question is also along the lines of rejoined. Okay. Did you ever imagine that it would have an impact even until now? That people are still finding themselves within Jadzia and going back to that kiss and just feeling so seen. Mm. Did you ever think that it would just last so long? I would hate to sound like I uh, had such a big ego to think that I would be a part of the bigger spectrum. But at the time, or I should say and, at the time, Ellen DeGeneres came out and there was a kiss on her show and I don't remember it being particularly mm, authentic. Like there was still jokes around it, right? They still had to be careful because I think it ended up not being great for her career. Then also there was a titillating kiss between Brooke Shields had her own half hour, her and another girl. But what gave this gravitas was it made sense for my character to fall back in love with a being that was in my widowed wife's body. It made so much sense, real sense, that this was an authentic storyline that could be dealt with in a real way, uh, unapologetically. So, yes, I thought it would be important. I think I thought there'd be more immediate results. So I guess that kind of surprised me. Not surprised, it just sort of was like, oh, huh. They pulled the show because people were upset about it when it aired originally. But as the world started to change, I think I, I was surprised that I was on anybody's radar. It felt like it was such a long time ago. How would that even, how would somebody who's young enough to be my daughter or granddaughter come up to me and say, you made me feel seen. No, nothing prepared me for that. <laughs> yeah. And it just, um, I have nieces and nephews, and I have a nephew who I'm very proud of who's trans, and uh, I think he describes himself as pan. And I, <laughs> to tell you that he feels seen by me, because I played a character, is just like, could there be a greater gift in your family? No. Yeah, so, no, I didn't, no, not like this. This is amazing. This is amazing. Thank you. Oh, I love you guys. I love that we get it. I love that we're on the same page, you know? My Thank sister, you. you're welcome. My sister-in-law, uh, Meredith Baker, from my first marriage, gave me a, st I still have it on my refrigerator, not the same refrigerator, but um, <laughs> that would be weird. Um, it says, you, do you, are you, ah, be you, nobody does it better. And it's so true, right? Because you do you sounds a little too casual. I said this to somebody in line. I wrote it on their thing today. But it is too casual because you, when you're talking about trans or LBGTQ, whatever that looks like for you, or even just being a person of, uh, we call it trauma, wounds, right? It, it doesn't matter if it's a big T trauma or small T trauma. Anybody who has to fight to be who they are, who they want to be, rather than who has, whoever has compressed them, that being that you've been compressed into being to make everyone happy to survive as a child. Anybody who's fighting that, to be yourself is one of the hardest things we do as human beings, and yet it's the only thing we need to fight for, right, with courage and celebrate each other for doing it. Because until we acknowledge the real person that we were born to be, we're always going to be trying too hard to do crazy things. You don't ever gonna feel, you're not gonna feel centered and grounded and loved by yourself until you find that. That's the truth.
Hello again. <laughs> Hello again. Um, I have a slightly lighter question, I guess. <laughs> the spots took 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought you'd laugh really. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, so Jadzia wasn't the first ever trill on, on Star Trek. But let's be honest, in TNG, the trill were kind of all over the place. So I do remember Andy saying how he got to do a lot of input for how the Cardassian species was. So do you remember anything that you decided this is was what trill are? Did you get any input? Like, did you get to give any input? No. That is very sad. No, I uh, think that w I didn't get to give the input, uh, but they did hire me an acting coach, and she said, you don't need an acting coach, you need someone to run lines with you, because it's inhuman what they're asking you to memorize with the sci-fi, with the uh, techno babble. But she was Holly Berry's uh, acting coach, so I was like, so let me just work this in, why not, right? So she said, they're telling me they don't like it, that you're, they don't like your sense of humor. <laughs> What's wrong with them? And she said, just keep it in. <laughs> because that's the part that works. That works. You're turning a phrase, you're saying it in a way that makes it funny, but it's not written to be funny, but that's just you, Terry, bringing what you think is Dax to Dax. So that's what I, um, little things that were physical that had nothing to do, they had to do with uh, necessities rather than a choice. Although I think that worked out perfect. Um, my spots were painted with watercolors by Michael Westmore. And um, I couldn't move my neck because if I moved my neck, then they got, they bled with the sweat, right? So they would get all blurry. So they would have little pieces of tissue and they got me a fan on stage and it went on for a few years until they developed this special paint. But it made it so I had my neck pretty stiff, which is kind of military anyway, right? Then there was another scene in the first season where, and I felt really insecure, I was the last person hired. Uh, I think Renee had already screamed at me a few times and uh, like screams, like, oh my God, it, nothing gives you more pleasure and freedom as an actor to, but then to be screamed at. Um, but uh, <laughs> so I'm waiting and I don't think I had very many, I don't believe I had very many lines in the scene. So I had my hands behind my back. And then the director, because there were all of us in it, okay, how are everybody's hands gonna be? Terry, you're good. I thought, thank God. <laughs> thank God. So I would walk around with my hands behind my back because I thought, this is my thing. Because I know from being a model and an actor, when you don't know what to do with your hands and there are no pockets, oh, it's a kiss of death. So I'm keeping my hands behind my back. So my neck being straight and my hands behind my back were necessities. <laughs> but they really uh, informed the character. So I got lucky. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And I don't think it's so sad so much as that I think a lot of, um, a lot of shows are like that. You are doing, especially the producers, whatever they want. Right? So it was rather special that Andy got to do this for his character. Yeah, for sure. And they knew him from before. And but what did inform them later was uh, they knew I was doing kickboxing, so I started doing fighting scenes. I love that. <laughs> right? But that was the writers finding out who I was and adding parts of me into the character. So, and Michael Dorn and I were friends, and we flirted in the first scene. So there are things that you don't get to say. I mean, I begged Michael Pillar if, if Avery and I could play chess and not next-gen chess. Can't we play like 21st century chess? Because that's how old I am. Wouldn't I have taught him if he was, but, so, but I, it was a little win because we still got to play chess, right? So who cares? So little things.
<laughs> Little victories. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. Hi, Terry. Hello. Um, the first time I saw you in t on TV was in Paper Dolls. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I loved you from the start. Mm -hmm. So I was very Thank pleased um, seeing you back on TV um, later on in Star Trek. But um, coming back to Paper Dolls, unfortunately, just one season. Um, half. So Oh, half a season. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you played a model. Did you get the role because you was a model before, or how did you get this part? Um, I still had to read for it. Uh, I read for Paper Dolls. It was a TV movie originally for ABC, and that was in like 1982. I read for it. I was already a cover girl at the time. I'd had I had quite a lot of covers and. And actually, one of my favorite covers was shot by Bill King, and it was for German Vogue. It's purple. It's like, ah, oh, it's this really freaking cool looking uh, cover of, of German Vogue. And also had the cover of hmm, your version of Life magazine with me and Matt Norklin on the cover, and at the time he was the Perry Ellis man. So, I was, a, I was the fastest model to go from new faces at 17, and in six months, I was a top fashion model. Yeah, so I was very lucky, but it was very scary being a girl from Iowa, it was, or scary, overwhelming. I was overwhelmed by the success I had. Uh, it was very weird to go to the magazine stand and see my face on more than two covers at a time in any given month. And uh, I think it was because I look a lot like Brooke Shields, to be honest. Um, and honestly, because I was kind, I was nice. I was this sweet kid that was 17 and I didn't cause a lot of problems and I didn't do the backbiting craziness. But by the time Paper Dolls came, I read for it for ABC, I went in I can't remember, I'm so sorry, I, I have like kind of a sort of recollection. There was an executive at ABC that, that um, my agent sent me in to see. I wasn't ready to do the series, but he said to my agent, we're gonna put her on hold with ABC, so I got a check for being on hold. Uh, and I went to voice lessons in acting class. And a year later, after the movie had come out, with Daryl Hannah, and um, oh my gosh, her name's gonna go right out of my head. I'm so sorry. It's it's definitely uh, it's a jet lag thing. Uh, shoot, she was in that thing with um, running on the beach, lifeguards. Baywatch. Yes, she was in Baywatch, dark brown hair. Oh my God, I'm so embarrassed, I can't think of her name. I'm sure that, be Alexandra Paul. Oh my God, I adore you right now, whoever said that, thank you. Alexandra Paul. So when they went to go to series, neither one of them wanted to be part of a TV series because they both were doing films. So they had me in their back pocket. Uh, I didn't know they didn't have anybody but me for my character on Paper Dolls in their back pocket. So I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> and uh, it was me and Nicolette Sheridan. But Nicolette read against somebody, I don't know who it was. They flew me from New York to LA to read for it. My neck was super stiff and I was really nervous. And they were like, Terry, you can relax. Nobody else is reading for your character. Then I thought, oh my God, but then if I fuck it up now, <laughs> and there's nobody, I'm letting them down. You see, I am damaged. So, <laughs> but I got it, right? And, and that happened during the 1984 Olympics. All of those ads came out, and uh, it, was a, it was crazy. Talk about imposter syndrome. Suddenly I couldn't go anywhere because I was on television, but people didn't understand. They already knew my face for watching me for three years doing mag being in magazines and being on TV uh, commercials. So, wow. So after that, I kind of went, oh my God, 
well, I did back to school and a couple other things, but then, yeah, I don't, what am I doing? I'm like, I don't need to do my autobiography right now. <laughs> or my biography. Thank you. You know what I mean? You, yeah, yes, you're sure. welcome. I don't even know if I answered your question. <laughs> You're back. I'm Nessie. so sorry to say that, but the next question will also be the last question for today. Okay. So sorry. So, so sorry. Hello. Hello. Uh, why did uh, Jatsia Dax die in DS9? Oh, golly. Uh, wow, that's a long answer. Okay, let's do the short version. <laughs> short version, because a lot of people already know this. Our contracts ended six-year contracts, uh, and the short story, short version, we were given take it or leave it offers. So short version, without all the fun drama, uh, I said, well then, thank you very much, but no thank you. Thank you. That's the short version. It was heartbreaking, but at the same time, it was, I had to stand up as a woman, and it was an equal rights moment for me. It felt that way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really love all of you. You make my life so much richer because of Star Trek and what you create that demands we be here for you. And I am honored, I am blessed, and I am grateful to all of you, each and every one of you, for coming here to meet me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Terry Farrell. Vielen Dank, dass ihr euch das Video angesehen habt. Wenn es euch gefallen hat, dann lasst einen Daumen nach oben da. Hier habt ihr nun verschiedene Auswahlmöglichkeiten. Ihr könnt oben links unseren Kanal abonnieren. Oben rechts geht es weiter zu tollen Videos von diesem Event. Unten rechts gelangt ihr zur Internetseite vom nächsten Event. Zu guter Letzt kann ich euch noch den Space Store empfehlen. Hier gibt es alles mögliche an Fanartikeln zu euren Lieblingsserien und Filmen. Bis demnächst auf diesem Kanal.